What's going on there, Internet Amigos? Over here in uh, Lamore, California today. Uh, <clears throat> just got here about, oh, probably 20, 30 minutes ago. Uh, let's see here. If you can see where that white truck is, right there, that one. I'm waiting on him to get what finished getting washed out, pull out, and I'm going to back in there and unload. Then we'll be headed up north a little bit, and, uh, about a, about 100 miles north of here probably, and reload and head over to Utah. Uh, nothing's really changed since the last time I talked to y'all. Uh, one thing that I did forget to mention was about a month ago, I'd had an issue with the truck. Uh, my EGR valve went out, and I was had a load booked, and I was on my way. I was going to go get it, and uh, what had happened was is I got in the truck, and as soon as I got in it, it gave me a, a little D-rate code up here on the deal. It's like, uh, gave me the little, you know, the cloud and exhaust symbol or whatever. It's like a little, uh, pretty much kind of like that, that little thing right there. And then it said D-rate and X amount of time. I think it was like uh, three hours or something like that, maybe. And so I had to back out on that load and take the truck down to Waco and get it fixed. But I was in and out in an afternoon and it ultimately wasn't that big of a deal. And my little keep truck and ELD here is also a diagnostics tool. So I went over and got on the computer and looked and the fault code said it was an EGR issue. And so I already knew what it was uh, when I went down there. They got me in and out in an afternoon, warranty covered it. And uh, I was back on the road pretty well in no time. So but uh we've already gone over all the chrome and stuff uh another thing was i just did my ifta so uh for those of you who don't know what that is i'll have to explain that in another video but it's essentially this thing you have to fill out and pretty much what it does is it kind of equalizes the fuel you buy in some states or the tax from that the tax proceeds from that fuel in individual states and kind of uh you know, makes equity between the miles you drive and the, uh, in, in certain states and the, uh, and the, uh, the gallons you buy in certain other states. So, for instance, if I were to buy 100 gallons of fuel in Kingman, Arizona and head west, well, I wouldn't burn 100 gallons of that fuel I purchased in Arizona between Kingman and the California state line on Interstate 40. So, since California has a higher fuel tax than Arizona, essentially, all the miles I drive in California on Arizona fuel, I have to pay the difference in tax. And that's what the IFTA thing kind of is for. So, anyways, so you figure up your fuel mileage and the miles you drove, and then that'll give you a balance of gallons, how many gallons you should have bought in that state, and then, you know, that's how much tax you owe or how much tax they owe you or, or whatever. So, anyways, so it's a really good way to figure your fuel mileage over the long term is what I was getting at. And uh, my fuel mileage on this truck for this quarter was 6.04 miles a gallon. And I'm pretty proud of that because I do a lot of running in the mountains. I'm always heavy. And if it's hot, I idle the truck because I like sleeping. And, uh, you know, 6.04, that's pretty good. I talked to a guy running in Cascadia. He was getting six and a half. And, you know, I don't know how he runs, if he drives fast or slow, or I don't know, but he told me he was getting six, five, six, five. So for the difference in aerodynamics and the horsepower and all that business, I would say 6.04 for this truck is pretty darn good. And if you can, uh, see over there, there's a guy standing on top of that tanker. So they're buttoning that up and I am about to, uh, as soon as he, yep, he's buttoning it up. So I'm about to back in over there and get unloaded. So we'll go ahead and wrap this one up and I'll try to get back with y'all here in uh, maybe tomorrow. See, this would be a really good time for one of the dash cams because I'm gonna go over Donner and it's real pretty, but unfortunately won't be able to film any of it because I don't have a GoPro. So that would be one useful thing for the GoPro. But anyways, we'll catch y'all guys on the next one. Take it easy.